Hey guys, just thought I'd have a little fun this week and do some show and tell. People see my stick bag and they're like, is that a trumpet case? What is that? My stick bag's a little bit unusual looking, but it's really cool because it holds a lot of stuff and it stands on its own. I'm also notorious for really carrying too much stuff in my bag. I've got it stuffed full of everything. But the thing is, I pretty much use all of these things on most gigs, so it's easily justifiable. So today, I'll walk you through my favorite utensils and tools of the trade. I'll show you my favorite sticks, rods, brushes, and mallets. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we talk about all the non-glamorous tips and tricks and all the nitty gritty stuff that helps us become better drummers. If you're new to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe. Okay, so as you've seen in these shots of the stick bag already, I have so much stuff in there. If I went into detail about every single item in there, we'd be here all day. So I'm gonna give an overview of some of my favorites, some of my most used items in the bag. First off, my pair of Vicfirth 5A sticks. These are just the in-between medium-sized sticks that are great all-purpose sticks. I practice with these most of the time, and I use these a lot. As you can tell, they're pretty chipped up, pretty worn away here, but they're probably my favorites. I also use my Vicfirth 5Bs a lot. These are great for any heavier gig if I need something a little more than a 5A, if I'm playing a heavy backbeat, um, any kind of hard playing, these just feel great. They're a great solid stick for hard playing. And my pair of 7As, anytime I need a tiny toothpick of a stick, I used to use these more often in college. That's when I first really got into using them because I was playing a lot of jazz and I was doing jazz combo and playing really light jazz stuff. These are great for that because you can play jazz time just effortlessly. The stick is so light and you can play really light and fast. They're very agile sticks. I've also used them occasionally playing in small rooms. But for the most part, I'm sticking to my 5As and 5Bs most of the time. So obviously I have a ton of sticks here in the bag. A lot of these are duplicates and backups. I always like to have probably two backup pairs of each kind of stick. So I've always got them ready to go in case I drop one, or in case I break one or something crazy happens. But those are really just the three main types of sticks I've got. All the others are just backups of the same thing pretty much. On to the hot rods. So Probably my most used hot rods are my thunder rods. These are really cool. If you're a longtime fan of the channel, you might remember a video a long time ago where I talked about duct taping them, um, which is interesting. Not everybody agrees with me on that, but I think it's cool to duct tape these together so that you get a punchier sound. I happen to like that sound. I know it, it might defeat the purpose of the original sound of the hot rod, but I think it's a very cool alternate sound that I really dig. These are actually my go-to for playing in small rooms. If it's a kind of a rock gig and I still need to really be able to dig in, but keep things under control. I really like the Thunder Rods. And I also really like the Lightning Rods. I've done the same thing with the duct tape here with these. They're basically just a quieter, lighter, less fat, heavy version of Thunder Rod. So these are great also for any kind of chill gig when I need less than a Thunder Rod. Now on to brushes. So my favorite pair of brushes are the Vicfirth Heritage brushes. These are the purple handle brushes. They're thin gauge wire. These are basically the, the classic jazz brush sound. I really like the response of these. I like the feel of them. I like the dynamic range, how I can actually slap a heavy rim shot on the snare with these if I want to. So I could actually play a rock beat with these and it sounds pretty cool. So I use those all the time, but I also have Vic Firth's Russ Miller brushes, which I bought originally thinking, oh, I use these all the time. I think I might've actually bought them before the Heritage brushes, but I ended up using them less because I wasn't a huge fan of sweeping with them with such heavier gauge wire that these have. Now I've also got a couple of those items that kind of fill the gap between rods and brushes. One of my favorites, the Vicfirth Root 505s. I've had these things for forever. They actually came originally with the little rings that would keep them bundled together and you could slide the ring up and down. Those did not last, they flew off at some point. I have no idea where they went. 
But I honestly never looked back because I like these totally loose. I don't like the feel of them when they're bundled up here because it's literally like a flimsy hot rod, which is just kind of weird to me. But when it's totally, you know, brush form like this, I think they're great. But if I want something a little fatter, heavier and more mellow than the 505s, the Vader Cajon brushes are super cool. And now on to some mallets. This is a pair of um, basic innovative percussion CT5 hard timpani mallets. If you know anything about percussion playing timpani, you wanna have a lightweight mallet. You don't want something that's super heavy, which actually makes them less than ideal on toms and cymbals in my opinion. So when I want a mallet to use on drum set, I actually use my Vic Firth 5A dual tones. These things are cool. And I've used these for everything. They're just perfect. These are the mallets that are made for playing drum set. So they're basically just a 5A stick with a felt end. And so they're much heavier than the timpani mallets because this is a solid hickory stick. And so it's got a lot of weight to it, which makes it easier to dig into toms, dig into cymbals. What that weight allows you to do is pull more low end and beef out of toms. And so you don't just get the light, slappier sound of the head contact, you get the full resonance because you can really lay into it with all the weight that these offer. So now speaking of cymbal rolls, some more mallets. I always have my innovative percussion hard yarn marimba mallets with me. Obviously I use them for playing marimba, which I do more teaching lessons than in gigs, but these are also great for cymbal rolls. If you need a classic suspended cymbal roll, like an orchestral cymbal roll, these are great because they're very bright. It'll pull out that brightness that you need to really cut past the orchestra. And just a few extra utensils. I've also got in here some uh, soft timpani mallets. These are good if I want a super subtle cymbal roll. Also a favorite item in the stick bag. This is the Vader bomber beater, which is way softer than a regular felt or plastic beater. So it's great to have if I'm playing a really chill acoustic kind of gig and I need a light kick sound or I'm feathering the kick playing jazz. It can also be really cool if you attach this to your left pedal. So you have this next to the actual plastic or felt beater as an alternate sound. So that can be cool too. And just a few other random items too. The Promark Sizzler. This is the best way to always have that extra sound palette available for whatever symbol you wanna put it on. I also keep my moon gels in my stick bag. Never know when I might need these. A lot of times I like to stick one on a snare. Tuning key, I keep a few tuning keys in the outer pocket of the stick bag. That way I know I'll always have them with me. And I have a bunch of these microfiber towels that are great as sweat towels um, when playing drums. And so I have one of these in my backpack, one in the stick bag. I try to keep them all over the place. So I always keep that in there too. Really great to have. Um, if you're playing drum set, you're gonna get sweaty. And so it can be really nice to have a good towel. So yes, I've got a lot of stuff, but the point here is that you need to carry with you the things that you're going to use often or the things that you will most likely need that if you don't have, you'll wish you had. It's great to have multiple stick sizes for different styles of music in different rooms. It's great to have rods for maybe a, a more quiet, kind of gig in a small room where sticks are too loud. You never know when brushes might be appropriate and you never know if the band leader might ask for a smooth cymbal roll or like a jungle drums, jungle tom part. 
where mallets can be perfect. I always try to be well prepared for whatever playing situation I end up in or whatever teaching situation I end up in. That's the other reason why I carry some of the extra percussion stuff because I might need that teaching a lesson even more so than on a gig. So don't limit yourself. Try to widen your sound palette. You'd be surprised at how many extra cool sounds you can get just by adding to your arsenal of sticks and brushes. You can buy a new pair of rods or brushes or sticks or whatever and realize you have a different sound that's now available on your whole setup. So that can be a really cool way just to have multiple layers of sound possibility so that you can be flexible and offer the best sound for whatever the song or style of music is that you're playing. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope this helps you out in some way or another. I know everybody loves gear stuff and I'm always interested to know what's in people's stick bags. So maybe you're interested to know what was in mine. So tell me in the comments below what's in your stick bag or what your favorite drumming tool is in your tool bag and your arsenal or what your favorite of the things that I've got is because I'd also like to know what of these things do you guys use regularly. So thanks everybody. If you're new to the channel, I hope I've earned your subscription. If you're interested in all the nitty gritty stuff that goes into playing drums, whether it's gear talk or lessons or tips and techniques, whatever that is, check out some of my other videos. This is probably the channel for you, so I really hope you'll subscribe. Meanwhile guys, take care. I will see you next week.